Hey everyone, welcome to the first video in my responsive web design video series. In this video, we're going to cover the very basics of building a web page. Maybe you're a little rusty. Maybe it's been a while since you took the intro to web programming class. Um, maybe you just didn't build up great skill in that course and you just need a little refresher. I'm going to talk about the basic template that we're going to use to build from for everything that we do. We've been building this kind of um, simple template that's got a header, navigation, content, and footer since the very first video in the Intro to Web Programming class. We're going to be using the same thing. In this responsive design course, we're going to build web pages that are going to respond to the media that, that the web pages are viewed on. So if they're viewed on a cell phone, they'll look good. If they're viewed on a widescreen monitor, they'll still look good. And we're going to do this from a mobile first perspective. When I say mobile first, I mean we're going to design our, our standard template for a mobile phone, and then we're going to add some things to it as it responds to larger and larger screens to make it good, look good on those larger screens. You didn't know it, but from the very beginning, we've been kind of thinking about the way we structure pages in a mobile first way. So let's talk about that. If I go to a website, let's say I go to the North Hennepin Community College website, we've got some standard areas on that web page. I have my header at the very top, and on the NHCC web page, it contains the logo information and it contains navigation. The header is almost always, at, well, it's always at the top of the web page. Navigation is also almost always near the top or at the top of a web page. We put it up there so it's the most obvious thing we see right away. Content is all the stuff that we go to the web page to see. The center area here, which is like a feature section that's showing all the new things that are happening at NHCC, that's part of content. If I scroll down, we've got some other stuff that's part of content, how to get started with applications, and then some information about why you should choose our school. And then we go down, we'll see more content and more content and more content. And when we get to the bottom, we find the footer. The footer usually contains more info about the branding for the organization. It usually has contact information. Also, it usually contains social media links, things like that. Um, and it's going to usually contain uh, some links to things that most people aren't coming to the website to see, but may need. Kind of like Title IX information or technology resources. These are just kind of some, some links that they put down there that are easy to find. Right? That's the standard design for all web pages. And within that framework, you could do a lot of things about how you arrange content. Let's talk about how we do that in terms of HTML markup. Here is the basic skeleton for a web page. Every web page is going to start out like this. If you think back to the Intro to Web Programming course that you took, you uh, know the skeleton contains HTML tags, right? We've got the um, HTML opening tag. We've got the language attribute in there, we have our head. And if you may recall, the head does not contain any content. What it contains is all that stuff that makes the website work correctly. Um, it's got these things called meta tags. It's got links to style sheets. It's got style sheets that are in the head. It's got the title. Um, it might even have some scripts and things like that. All that stuff that makes the web page behave the way we want it to behave, but does not show up in the browser. In ours, we've got the meta tag for char set. It's got UTF-8. This is something that you need. I've got something here called meta, and it's got the name viewport, and it's got content width equals device width, initial scale one. We didn't talk about this in the last course. This is a necessary tag for your website to be responsive. And we'll talk more about this in future videos. Just know that you have to have it. We've got the title. And we're going to put something in here that's going to describe what the web page is about. This has to be in every web page. So since this is my responsive template, 
I'm going to put something in a descriptive responsive te template. When I view this in the browser, that responsive template is going to show up on the browser tab. Then I've got something called a link tag. This link tag here is linking me to a style sheet. You see it says link href style.css rel equals style sheet. We haven't really used that in these courses yet. In this course, uh, the responsive course, I want you to use linked style sheets from here on out. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Then our head closes and we have our body. The body is where all of the content is going to go. You may remember this from the intro to programming course. Let's add some content into the body. So when we looked at the NHCC website, we had a header, we had navigation, we had content, and we had footer. We're going to use our semantic tags to mark that up, much like we did in the other courses that you took. Start with the header tag, header opens, header closes. You may recall that um, the syntax for HTML for proper syntax is that all of your tags have uh, lowercase for the elements inside them. So it's not uppercase H-E-A-D-E-R, it's lowercase. I'm going to add an H1 in here. because If you think about the heading hierarchy that you learned about in the previous course, the page should have one H1 that introduces the whole entire page. And that goes in the header. Okay, that's my header. You can put more in the header at some point, but for now, this is all we're going to have. This is going to be very bare bones template. I'm going to add a nav because that's the next thing we want to have in there. And you can put your nav in the header if you want. Um, you can even put it above the header if you wanted, but normally the nav goes somewhere near the top of the website. Nav. And then in the nav, we're going to put our navigation. The way that we've been doing it and the way that is kind of the norm in the industry is to make a list of links. So to do that, we're going to start with UL. And a UL is going to contain, contain LIs. Remember, UL stands for unordered list. LI stands for list item. And inside those list items, we're going to add our links, our hyperlinks. Remember, that's with the A tag. And the A tag should separate or should surround some content. I'm going to put link to page two in there. And then the A tag in the opening should have the href attribute because that's what makes it a hyperlink. I don't have a, another page that I'm linking to right now, so I'm just going to put some placeholder in there. It's not going to be a functioning link. It's not going to take us anywhere. But what we're doing is we're building a template. When we actually do make a whole bunch of pages that we want to link together, then we can fill in that href attribute. For now, we're just going to leave it like this. I'm going to copy this whole thing with the li. And I'm going to paste it three more times. I'll make this, uh, this is going to be like a five page website, potentially. And so I'm putting four links in there. Each page is going to have a link to every other page. So that's my nav. I've got my header with an H1. I've got my nav with a UL, a series of LIs. And in each, so each of those LIs, I have a link. You might want to pause the video and make sure you get all this stuff. All right, welcome back. Let's add some more things. Below the nav, we're going to have our content. I'm just going to start with um, adding a article. Actually, I'm going to add a new tag that I didn't introduce in intro to program into intro to web programming. It's called the main. Main is going to be for main content. It's all the stuff that we come to the website to view. Okay, we have main, and we also have a side. A side is tangential content, or it's content that's not the main stuff, but it's maybe things like ads or um, maybe images and videos and graphics that aren't directly related to all the content that you're coming to view. Maybe it's things like um, lists of top 10 articles from, from uh, uh, 
uh, previous articles on this website. There's all kinds of things that you can use the aside for. Okay, in the main and in the aside, we're going to do things like add articles. Remember, the article tag is used to contain content that is all related. So maybe I'm going to have three articles on this page. Each one is about a different topic. So article opens and closes. It's inside of the main. Each article, I'm going to start with a heading. Since articles are a subsection of the whole web page, the heading that needs to head them up is H2. If the heading for the whole page is H1, sections of the page need to be headed up by H2s. This is the heading hierarchy that you've learned about in previous videos. In this article, I'm going to add a series of paragraphs. If you remember back to previous videos, I usually use Laura Mixum text to do that. So I'll go back to the Laura Mixum website that we, we used to always go to. I'll get some placeholder text. I'll take three paragraphs. Put it in here and I'll make sure I get my paragraph tags around them. So I'm opening this paragraph. I'm going to close it right here. Open the next paragraph right below it. Close that paragraph where it ends. Open the next paragraph right below that. And then finally get make sure I've got my closing tag below that paragraph right down here. Okay, so now I have my header with an H1, my nav with the UL, LIs and all the links. You hopefully got all this stuff because you paused it and you got that content. I've got my main, which is going to contain an article with an H2 and three paragraphs. Paragraph one opens and closes, paragraph two opens and closes, and paragraph three opens and closes, and then my article closes. All right, I'm going to copy this article and I'm going to have my main content have three articles in it. So I'll select the whole thing and copy it and I will paste it and paste it. Now I've got a main with three articles. I've got my header, nav and footer. I'm going to minimize this article. I have, uh, I'm using Notepad++. You may be using it. You may be using a different IDE. It doesn't matter what you develop your code on as long, as long as you know how to use the IDE. I can collapse these things so I don't have to look at all the content, but I can see what my tags are. So you can see I've got my main that has three articles in it. I'm actually going to copy one of these articles and I'm going to paste it into the aside. So my aside will also have an article with an H2 and three paragraphs. Okay, so now I've got my header with an H1, my nav with a UL, a series of LIs. I've got my main with three articles. I've got my aside with an article in it, and then my body ends. Last thing I want is my footer. Footer is always at the bottom of the page, and for now, all I'm gonna do is Put a paragraph in here that has copyright information. And there you have it. That's the standard uh, template for all the pages that we're going to be working on from here on out. What I want you to do is make sure that you have all of this. Pause the video and make sure you've got the entire thing from the opening HTML tag down to the bottom of the head. Okay, welcome back. Now let's look at the body. The body opens and inside the opening of the body, I have a header, H1, nav with UL, a series of LIs, and each of those LIs contains a link. Pause the video and make sure you have it exactly like this. 
All right, welcome back. After the nav, so you've got your nav opening and closing, you have your main. Your main is going to contain a series of articles. Okay. And an article is going to open fully inside the main and close fully inside of the main. So the main opens here. My articles go all the way down here and the main closes. I've got three of those articles. So here's what an article looks like. It opens, it has an H2, and it's got a series of paragraphs. Paragraphs always open and close. I'm going to minimize these paragraphs so you don't have to look at them. And we can see what's in an article. So the article contains my H2 and three paragraphs, and the article closes. And I've got two more articles that are identical to this. Okay. So I want you to make sure you have this structure. Look at this. I'm going to expand these paragraphs again. And then I'll pause at each section of the, of the article. So main opens, article opens. I have an H2 with the paragraph. Make sure you get all this. Make sure the paragraph closes. I've got two more paragraphs inside of there. And then that article closes. And we're going to have two more articles exactly like that one. So make sure you get this stuff, pause the video, and come on back. That is our main. And our side is going to have the same thing. It's going to open and close. It's going to have an article with an H2 and a series of paragraphs. And the article closes and the aside closes. At the bottom, we have our footer with a paragraph. All right, that's the basics for the template that we are going to be building on for this entire course. I hope you got all that stuff and you save it and you keep track of it because you're going to use it over and over and over. Thanks for watching.